and welcome to Pock and Rob. In today's video, I had intended doing my forward look into the year 2023. I'm going to hold that over for a further week, which means it'll be the first video of 2023. And instead, I'm going to kind of initiate slash continue a series I started last year, somewhat unwittingly, and that is anniversaries. Now, last year I did is 1971 the best year in music, and I did my top 15 albums from 1971. I didn't continue the series initially because 1972 was something of a struggle. But this video, and you've clicked on it so you probably noticed, is going to be looking at my favourite albums from 72, but a decade later for the 40th anniversary for 1982, which is a year that I find much more engaging in terms of my particular musical tastes. Before I continue, I remind you to like the video, hit the subscribe button and ring the bell to receive notifications of future content. And let's dive in to 1972. So if 1971 can lay claim to being one of the greatest years of music ever, if not the greatest in rock, 1972 is a bit of a damp squib in comparison. I couldn't find 15 albums that I liked enough. I've struggled finding 10. And ultimately, I've boiled it down to a top seven. This reflects probably how little I really know from this year or indeed love. So at number seven and at number six are the two albums that I felt really needed mentioning but didn't quite make a top five. And at number seven, Paul Simon by Paul Simon, his debut. I like the record enough but there's not enough that really stood out and has burrowed into my brain in the way that so many albums from 71 did. This does of course contain me and Julio down by the schoolyard and congratulations it also contains Mother and Child Reunion, so it's got some great songs in from a great songwriter. Number seven, Paul Simon. And number six, Talking Book by Stevie Wonder. This is an album that contains superstition. That alone warrants its status as a classic, but it also contains You Are the Sunshine of My Life, and I believe when I fall in love, it will be forever. And it's the fact that, again, the rest of the tracks around it don't immediately leap to mind, suggests why I don't find 1972 a great year. But Talking Book, which I believe won the Grammy for the best album, is my number six. And at number five is an artist I've grown to appreciate a lot more over the last decade. This is their debut as a solo artist, and it's a blooming weird title for a odd album in some ways. It's Henry the Human Fly by Richard Thompson. Pretty hard to get hold of. My copy here is an ex-library one. And it's from the 80s, which is why it's got the Hannibal logo up here. Henry the Human Fly contains Rollover Vaughan Williams and The Poor Ditching Boy and The Angels Took My Racehorse Away and probably the best track on here, which is Nobody's Wedding. Richard Thompson's Henry the Human Fly at number five. And number four is an album by an artist that I absolutely adore. I, I, I big up this artist whenever I get the chance to. It's Slade by Slade. This was their sole album that contains a number one hit single, and bear in mind they had six of them, which is, of course, Mama, We're All Crazy Now. But Slade, it's not my favourite Slade album. There are many that I will put above it, including the one that comes after this, which is Old, New, Borrowed and Blue. Um, but this has Goodbye to Jane, which might be a tie, at least, for my favourite Slade song. Goodbye to Jane is here on Slade by Slade. And number three is an album, an, another great debut album. I'm starting to appreciate this more as I've grown older, given the weird soundscapes involved in it, but it's Roxy Music by Roxy Music. Such a great record. Ladytron, uh, 2HB, Chance Meeting... If you buy later reissues like I have, then you also get the debut single, Virginia Plain. It's an album, like I say, that I think is going to grow on me over time. And each time I hear stuff like Remake, Remodel, I remind me how much I actually like this. There is better to come in their career from Roxy Music. But the debut album is my number three. At number two and at number one are the only albums on this list that I would say are truly essential to me that I absolutely adore all the tracks on it and could walk away and hum them and at number two it's 
Honky Chateau by Elton John. I now really quite like Honky Cat, but the other music wrapped around it, including Rocket Man, which is a bit overplayed, is great. So stuff like Mellow, Think I'm Going to Kill Myself, Susie. Then we've got Amy and Salvation and Slave and Hercules. And then Mona Lisa's and Mad Hatter's, which is brilliant. Absolutely fantastic song that is gives this album so much more status than it might have had i like the rest a lot of it's pop but mona lisa and mad hatter is phenomenal and in my top 100 songs of all time honky chateau takes the number two spot leaving the number one spot for something that often comes very highly on these lists it is the rise and fall of ziggy stardust and the spiders from mars by david bowie my copy is in this double vinyl called Rock Galaxy, which also contains Hunky Dory, which, by the way, I think is a better album. But this was the album that really made Bowie a star. So kicking off with Five Years, then we've got Soul Love, Moon Age Daydream, Starman, and It Ain't Easy. That's a great side one. But then on side two, we've got possibly my favourite on the record, Lady Stardust, then Star then hang on to yourself. And then we've got the final triptych of Ziggy Stardust, an amazingly good rock song, Suffragette City, which I find a bit meh, and then Rock and Roll Suicide. It is, in my opinion, the best album of 1972. So let's move now into 1982 and albums that have just had their 40th anniversary. This is a year I can get behind a lot more than 1972 and picking 15 albums from here wasn't difficult. The ones that didn't make it in are things like Avalon by Roxy Music or Rio by Duran Duran and The Lexicon of Love. So some great albums that didn't quite make the cut because at number 15, Nylon Curtain by Billy Joel. This is an album that contains Allentown and Goodnight Saigon and the incendiary Laura, where he kind of goes off on one and drops the F-bomb. Very un-Billy Joel-like. But the Nylon Curtain, number 15. Number 14, Five Miles Out by Mike Oldfield. On this record, we have his first hit single as a songwriter, rather than a piece of music. And that is Family Man, which was a hit for Hall of Notes. The version on here is sung by Maggie Riley, who also sings with Mike himself on the title track Five Miles Out. Side one is a long form instrumental called Taurus 2, which is basically what Mike Oldfield was most famous for. Number 14, Five Miles Out. And number 13 is an album that contains one of the very best singles of the 80s. It does cast a shadow over the album, but the album itself is rather good. Two Rye A by Dexie's Midnight Runners. So this kicks off with the Celtic Soul Brothers. On the way, we get the cover version of Jackie Wilson Said, which was a top 10 hit. We get Liars A to E and Old and Plan B. And then finally, we reach the last track, which is Come On Eileen, which is just magnificent. A perfect pop single in every single way. This was recently reissued with a new remix called Two Raya, as it should have sounded. When it gets to a price I'm prepared to pay for it, I may well pick up a copy. Two Rye by Dexys Midnight Runners, 13. And number 12, we have The Quiet Beetle, and it's Gone Troppo. This is his most overlooked and maligned album. He, he'd lost interest in the music industry, and he retired for five years from music at this point and, and focused pretty much purely on the movie side of things. He, he, he refused to promote Gone Troppo, which is a shame because there's some good stuff on here. And I think had it got more notice, it might have it might be held in slightly higher regard. So we have Wake Up My Love and That's The Way It Goes, the brilliant title track Gone Troppo. And it concludes with Circles, which is a song he wrote in 68 and it is available on the Kinforns demos, the Escher demos from the reissued White Album 50th Anniversary set. Gone Troppo at number 12. And number 11 is Peter Gabriel 4, also known as Security, an album that contains San Jacinto and I Have the Touch 
and Rhythm of the Heat and Shock the Monkey, Wallflower. It's an eight track album. It's not my favourite Peter Gabriel album because that came out immediately prior with Peter Gabriel 3, which is just mint. But Peter Gabriel 4 is at number 11. Into the top 10 and an artist that kind of flies under the radar. It's Warren Zevon and The Envoy. This was his last record for five years. In his case, it wasn't because he'd grown disillusioned with the music industry. It was the fact that he had to go to rehab. Um, so on here we have the title track we have the Hula Hula Boys Jesus Mentioned Let Nothing Come Between You it's a really fine album that kind of ended his first stage of his career The Envoy at number 10 and number 9 is an album by Madness and it's The Rise and Fall I do think this is Madness's greatest achievement it's a coherent album it's Almost, but not quite a concept album because no one told him it was about growing up. To No one told Mike Barson that, who just kind of wrote what he felt like. Title track, Rise and Fall. The hit single, Tomorrow's Just Another Day. Our House, which is a perfect pop single. Blue Skin Beast. Mr Speaker Gets the Word. Concluding with Madness Is All In The Mind. It is, for me, Madness's greatest album, The Rise and Fall. And number eight is Bruce Springsteen with Nebraska. This is a Spartan album. It is vocal and guitar only because it was recorded as demos in a hotel room. And when he presented this to the record company and said, we're going to make this album, they said, you've made it. This is the album. They, they, they're that good demos that the demos became the record. So we have the title track, Nebraska. Atlantic City, which is the best known track on here. Mansion on the Hill. Johnny 99 and Highway Patrolman, both of which were covered by Johnny Cash. And he actually named um, one of his albums, Johnny 99, after the track. And it concludes with Reason to Believe. Spartan, yes. Bleak, possibly. But Nebraska is my number eight. Into the top seven. And the reason I put the demarcation here is because these seven albums are a cut above everything else I've mentioned, much as I like these previous eight. And at number seven, Thriller. Thriller came out in 1982. You may think it was 83 because Billie Jean was a hit single and got to number one, but remember, it was released at the tail end of 82 and had already had one hit single, which was The Girl Is Mine with Paul McCartney. By no means the best track on here, and in fact, the worst track on here, because this has also got, of course, Beat It and Billie Jean and the title track Thriller, and Pretty Young Thing, and The Lady of My Life, and it's just what hasn't been said about Thriller before. It's just a perfect pop album, and it's my number seven. And number six is the album that's going to cost this video its cool points, because it is Are You Ready by Bucks Fizz. Their most successful album, it reached number ten in the chart, because it was also trailed by two number one hit singles which were My Camera Never Lies and The Land of Make Believe. They bookend the album. In between we've got stuff like Another Night which could have been a hit single. In fact it was released in Japan as one. And Easy Love and 20th Century Hero, Breaking and Entering. It's a really fine pop album. It is their best album, but it's not my favourite because that is their debut because of the, the emotions that evokes in me. It also contains, for me, by a country mile, their best song, and that is Now Those Days Are Gone. It was released as a single and also made the top ten, but it's got some beautiful a cappella vocals. And it's the song I play to people when they say Bucks Fizz were, were rubbish. I make them listen to that because it's an amazing song with an amazing vocal performance. Are you ready? Number six. And number five is the Masters of Metal. Iron Maiden's Number of the Beast. So this was a number one hit album. Eight tracks on here with Invaders, Charlotte the Harlot, Children of the Damned, which is grim. Run to the Hills is on here. There's the title track. It contains... This version contains Total Eclipse because this is the special edition that came out to celebrate the 40th anniversary with the double Beast over Hammersmith. So this is a triple record. 
The original contained Gangland, which actually I quite like. Maiden were on fire at this point because the album also closes with Hallowed Be Their Name, which is amongst the greatest ever tracks of the 80s and is in my top 100. Number of the Beast, and number five. The final four are all in my top 15 albums of the 80s. So if you watch that first video I made and put out on the channel, then you'll have no surprise about what's coming because at number four, Love Over Gold by Dire Straits, a five track near perfect album. Kicks off with Telegraph Road, which is about 12 minutes long, but you enjoy every minute. It doesn't feel 12 minutes to me ever. Then we've got Private Investigations. That's side one. Side two, we have Industrial Disease, followed by Love Over Gold, which is a sublime title track, and It Never Rains. They Love Over Gold, number four. Number three is an album that I have a very deep relationship with that I have played through in my head in exams. If you've heard me tell that story before, you'll know that it is Tug of War by Paul McCartney. This, I've had, my relationship to the album, this album goes back to the release of Ebony and Ivory, which I loved when I was seven years old. And I didn't hear this album until probably about 1989, but then I got to know and love Tug of War and Take It Away and Somebody Who Cares and Here Today, Ballroom Dancing and Wanderlust and Pound Is Sinking. And it's some of the very best Paul McCartney songwriting. Tug of War at number three. And number two and number one were my number two and number one of the 1980s. They also happened to be my third and second best albums of all time. And at number three, Elvis Costello and the Attractions, Imperial Bedroom. There's 15 tracks on this record and the invention and the melodicism and the playing and the lyricism of this album, in my opinion, is unmatched by almost anything else in music. There's a co-write on here with Chris Difford from Squeeze, which is Boy With A Problem. And it's probably my least favourite track on the album. And the one thing that prevents the album from actually achieving what I consider to be perfect album status because I don't particularly like it. But when you've got Beyond Belief and Man Out of Time and You Little Fool and Pigeon English and And In Every Home and it's just so much great on this that I can forgive Boy With A Problem. It's a terrific album. Imperial Bedroom by Elvis Costello and the Attractions is my number two. Which leaves my number one as Shoot Out the Lights. An album that was initially recorded in 1980 with Jerry Rafferty. But Richard Thompson didn't like it. It also failed to get them a new record deal, so they re-recorded the material. This therefore puts the lie to the fact that this is a divorce album. It is not divorce songwriting because at the time they were still happily married it is however divorce performances because they were in trouble by the time they were recording this for the second time so this is eight tracks of brilliant songwriting from Richard and a contribution from Linda as a co-write with Did She Fall or Was She Pushed it contains Man in Need Don't Renege on Our Love Just the Motion and the title track Shoot Out the Lights, and two of my all-time favourite tracks by this man are Walking on a Wire, and then the concluding track Wall of Death, which is just brilliant. Shoot Out the Lights by Richard and Linda Thompson, my number one album of 82. So that concludes my top seven of 1972 and my top 15 of 1982. Let me know in the comments below what I might have missed out on. And don't bother to mention Exile on Main Street. I'm not a Stones fan. It's never likely to, to rise, particularly in my affections. Before I go, I remind you to like, subscribe and hit the bell. I'll be back in a week with my forward look into 2023. But until then, thanks for watching.